Hey, micro students, it's time to jump into unit two. I've got two fear responses for you. What I want you to do is download the fear responses, try them both, take a look at your answers, and if you need more help, watch this video for some more details and tips. Let's jump into it. Unit two, fear response number one, it says, assume that beef is sold in a competitive market and that beef is a normal good and a substitute for chicken. Really quick, if you hadn't already seen it, there's a video where this econ professor is talking about beef and he just says beef like a thousand times times in a row and the student inside the lecture records it. It's on YouTube, go watch it, it's hilarious. The opportunity cost of beef, 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 beef. Anyways, that's why I chose beef. Again, it's a competitive market, so we're looking at supply and demand here, and it's a normal good and a substitute for chicken. Okay, so we're gonna use that information later in the fair response. In A, draw correct labeled market for beef, show equilibrium price for beef labeled PE and QE respectively. All right, let's draw it, supply and demand. Here we go, we've got quantity, we've got price, demand goes to the dirt, supply goes to the sky. To get the points, you got a dot, dot, dot over, P and E, that's what they wanted it labeled, and down, this is Q, E, that's what they wanted. That would be one point, done, easy! Of course you can draw a market equilibrium. Shade in the area of total consumer surplus, for the market at the equilibrium price. All right, so on your free responses, you're gonna be asked to be able to spot things like consumer and produce surplus and dead weight loss, and sometimes you have to calculate them. Now, in this first free response, I'm asking you just spot it. Do you know where consumer surplus is? And then later, you have to actually do the calculation for it in free response number two. But the point here is you have to understand the concept, consumer surplus, the difference between what you're willing to pay for things and what you do pay. Consumer surplus is this area up here. Shade this in. Uh, the AP test for you AP students does ask you to shade in things. They've never actually used shade in consumer surplus as far as I remember, but you need to know where it is to be able to calculate it. And if they ask you to shade it in, you know consumer surplus right there, that would be worth one point. Now, if you thought, wait a second, I thought we wanted total surplus. No, it's total consumer surplus. So be careful, read the question carefully. If you did total surplus, you'd include the producer surplus down here, but it's just the consumer surplus, so there it is. All right, that was uh, A2, A3. If the government places a price ceiling on beef below PE, ooh, below PE, first thing you see, anytime you see a question about ceilings or floors, the first thing I want you to say is, is it binding? Is it gonna have an effect? A price ceiling below equilibrium will have an effect. So this is gonna affect the market, no doubt about it. A price ceiling above equilibrium has no effect. It's not binding. But the question says, would the demand for beef increase, decrease, or stay the same and explain? So this is A, three, all right. The answer is stay the same. Wait, what? Well, it's a tricky question. Not a trick question, but a tricky question. Yes, a price ceiling down here will definitely be binding. It's gonna affect the market. It's gonna cause a shortage. So a price ceiling right here, the quantity supplied would be here, quantity demanded would be here, but the demand does not change. The question is saying, will the demand, not the quantity demanded. Remember, there's a difference between the demand and the quantity demanded. The demand is gonna stay exactly the same. So the demand curve, demand, Curve does not shift, doesn't shift. The only thing that changes is there's gonna be an increase in the quantity demanded. So yes, there is gonna be movement along this curve and now we're gonna be over here because the price fell, but it is definitely not a shift in the curve. And it seems like that doesn't matter. I know you think it sounds the same, but the teacher, professor know that people, you know, they, they understand the broad ideas, but it's the little details sometimes I like to ask. So just be careful, read the question carefully and remember price does not shift the curve. That means a change in the price, like a price ceiling or a price floor doesn't shift the curve, it moves along the curve. Okay, that was it for that one. All right, B, on your graph, show the effect of the market for beef if the price of chicken falls significantly. All right, we're looking at chicken here. We already know the relationship, they're a substitute. So it's saying if the price of a substitute falls. So there's the decrease in the price of a substitute. Okay, label the new quantity price, uh, price, price and quantity P1 and Q1. 
So the question is, what happens on the curve? Now your teacher or professor is going to ask this. They're going to give you a scenario. They'll say, okay, there's a change in technology in the production of something, or there's uh, a subsidy, or there's you know a change in income or substitutes or complements. So just this, this is just shifters, just shifter practice. For this one, if the price falls for a substitute, people are going to buy less beef, right? People are going to buy chicken instead because chicken's less expensive, and so the demand is going to fall. I'll label this D1. Add in an arrow, it's starting to get a little ugly. And it told you to label it. To get the point, you had to label dot dot over P1 and dot down Q1. So to get this, you'd have to label this new demand curve. This one is a shift, right? Yes, the price fell because that the price goes down, but not it wasn't just you know the government putting a price ceiling. The price fell because the demand shifted. And the reason the demand shifted was the price of a different product, a substitute product, was cheaper. So demand goes down. We end up with P1, Q1 as a new equilibrium. And here we are right there. That would be worth another point for this one. So if we're adding in some points here, let's say this one was two points, the explain. So one point for saying same and one point for saying explain. So this is what it'll look like. Now your teacher or professor might not do it this way. They might not do it on the same graph. This would probably get pretty ugly. I just did it on the same graph, you know, why not? But your teacher might say, redraw the graph over again and then show what would happen with this scenario or that scenario. The point is you gotta remember there's only four things that can happen. Demand can go up, demand can go down, supply can go up, a shift to the right, or supply can go down. And basically just make sure you know what the shifters of demand and supply are. All right, now, here we go. Assume instead, ooh, in the response, if it says instead, ignore everything else you learned, right? Don't, don't think about anything else. It wasn't, there was no demand decrease, no price of chicken. Assume instead that incomes increase for consumers and the government subsidized beef producers. What will happen to the equilibrium price and quantity as a result of both? Now, I threw that word in both to help me remind you this is a double shift. I made a video that explains the idea of double shifts. In fact, I made a video for all of supply and demand. If you haven't watched that eight minute long video that explains supply and demand, go back and watch it if you're really struggling on this. But you need to understand the idea of double shifts. Let's do it up here. A double shift, right? For here's quantity, here's price, here's demand, here's supply. I just want to know what happens to price and quantity. They're not asking for the graph here. They're just saying what's what's going to happen to the price and quantity. Well, the first one, there's income for consumers increases. We know it's a normal good, so the demand would increase. We're doing that. Next, it says the government subsidizes beef producers. That would cause supply to shift to the right. So we have a double shift here. We started here at point A. We ended here at point B. So to answer the question in C, price and quantity. Quantity definitely increased. No doubt about it. Quantity is going to increase because look, we got quantity going up. Price though is something called indeterminate. If you know, if you see my video, you know what I'm talking about. It might go up, it might go down. It depends on the severity of the shifts. The, the key here is that you need to explain, and that's worth another point, you need to explain this idea of it depends on the severity of the shift. So for the explain part, I'll just make sure you, I'll write explain. Like, make sure you explain this idea that, um, you know, when there's a double shift, right, we can't tell what's going to happen to the price because it might go up, it might go down, depending on the severity of shift. Or you can break it down and say, okay, an increase in demand, price would go up, quantity would go up. A increase in supply, price would go down, quantity would go up. So quantity is going to go up no matter what. The price, it might go up, it might go down, we don't know. So let's make this worth two points. You had to have indeterminate, quantity goes up, that'd be one point, and then that explain as well. Make sure you recognize this was a double shift. All right, in D. In D, now it says, assume the total revenue for chicken producers increased. So total revenue went up when the price of chicken, price of chicken fell. We had a situation where the price went down and the total revenue went up. That means the demand is relatively elastic. I'll just circle that, relatively elastic. Now this is something called the total revenue test. Now no explanation required here. Right? They're not asking for why or any of that stuff. Later on in the second free response, I actually do some calculations. So you have to understand how to calculate that concept of elasticity. But for this one, it's relatively, I'll write that down, relatively elastic. It's just the rules. You gotta know when the price goes up, total revenue goes up, then it's inelastic. When the price goes up, total revenue goes down, 
then it's elastic. So whenever they're going the same direction, price goes up, total revenue goes up, inelastic price go, or goes down, total revenue goes down. There's a, in the video for elasticity, at the very end I gave you a trick for this with your arms, if you saw that video. Same thing I hear though, if the price goes up, total revenue goes down, or in this situation, the price goes down, total revenue goes up. If they're going the opposite direction, that makes it elastic. And it makes sense, right? If the price goes down and you're selling more total revenue, then it must be sensitive to a change in price. You got a lot more customers by lowering your price a little bit, a lot more people showed up. Quantity is sensitive to a change in price. Okay, so let's say that's worth another point, just saying relative elastic. All right, let's add up the points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, eight points total. How did you do? I hope you did well, and I hope you're ready for a harder fear response. Fear response number two is a lot trickier because it requires more calculations.